What's ripening in YouTube? So we're out here, Southwest Florida. We're uh, near a town called Alva, which is outside of uh, Fort Myers, kind of between Fort Myers and LaBelle. And we're getting ready to start phase two of this food forest install project. Um, right before Christmas, we installed phase one, which is what you see behind me. Um, we installed this knowing there was no irrigation, so we kept the, the scope really small and we only planted the main species so that the client would, it would be able to hand water. And they've done a really good job of that. I'm actually really impressed with uh, what they've been able to keep up with. What we did is basically a banana circle. We did four of them. And then we did a series of uh, longer term fruit trees. And then we have interplanted with a bunch more support species, um, both at the time of the initial installation. And then a couple weeks ago, I brought a bunch of other stuff in. We just had some rain recently. So the grass is all jumped up. So right now what we're doing is just coming around and reestablishing the edges. So we're, we're whipping around all the edges so that we can control the grass from jumping into the, the mulch. And uh, we have a strategy that we're gonna use to help mitigate that, um, which I'll explain to you at another time. But So this is the phase one. And what the client said to me was that we want this again times two. So, you know, they basically told me, we trust you, we want you to come out here and design it for us you know whatever you think with what what's out here we like your style we like what you're doing and uh you know so i, I wrote him up a proposal for it um, gave him a price told him about how many trees we were going to use they said yes let's go and so here we are one of the things that's really important for this type of work is to have your materials in place before you start um, in this case we've got uh, tree trimmers have been dropping off the wood chips for quite a while. Um, one of the things we're going to have to do is come back and fill in the pathways in the initial planting because we did run out. Of we, we ran out of wood chips the first time. All this has been accumulating since then, and what we're actually going to do is start moving the wood chips off of this side of the pile because we want to do a planting here anyway. So we're going to have to move that to fill the paths over there, and then we're going to have clean area to set out this whole layout here, which is what we're going to do here soon. Um, so we just got here, we're just doing a little bit of a uh, cleanup of the existing site, a little bit of prep, and uh, I'll try to bring the camera back out and kind of give you guys updates as we go, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy. So for you designers out there, or, or folks that are doing your own kind of site development, one thing that I always recommend, especially if you're going to be using a lot of wood chips, is that you just designate an area for it. Um, ideally the area that you designate is going to be near your entrance, in this case we have an entrance right here. So that when they come in to deliver it, it's not confusing. They're not gonna drop it willy-nilly all over your property. Give them a spot. In this case, they actually had flags until until they, you know, the, the trimmer people knew kind of where to be. They had flags out here to make sure that the chips were put in the right spot. Another thing that's really important is to make sure that they're piling the chips. We want piles on piles. You don't want individual piles randomly scattered um, because what happened last time when we came here, they had, they had been accumulating wood chips for a while. And when we got there, the grass had already started to grow into the piles and around every single one. So there's a big grass like ring around each one of them. And for us, when we're scooping that material, you know, we're trying, we're making every effort not to scoop up the grass and place it into the new planting, but it's really hard to do. But if you keep all the, the piles really close to each other, that's not an issue because the grass is only going to come in from the edges typically, unless, unless this sits for a really long time. The grass is only going to come in from the edge and then it's pretty easy for me to you know to avoid scooping out too much grass at one time and uh, it makes it a lot easier so keep that in mind keep keep in mind that you know you want your mulch to be easy to drop off for the for the people that are dropping it off you know you don't want it to be such a hassle that they won't come back and you also want to make sure it's not in your own way in this case it's a little bit in the way but it's not too bad we're actually going to use up the part that's in the way so we should be okay All right, so I want to talk a little bit about the intention and the uh, methodology behind the design for this particular part of the property. So we have this existing food forest. We really, really want privacy from the neighbors. And, we, and the intention of this is to be a relatively low maintenance area. So we're using uh, mostly species that are hardy to this zone, species that are known to do well with our soil conditions and we're relying on heavy mulch because we have a lot of mulch. 
okay? Um, the pattern that we're doing is the banana circles with several main trees around them. And the scope of work for this project is eight banana circles. So the way I'm laying this out, you can see behind me, I've got these yellow flags. You'll see they're in, they're in trios. There's three, 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 three. And this, so this is kind of one big super bed. I've got the banana circles laid out by the yellow flags. And then I have the pink flags indicating the main long-term fruit trees. And so this is what I consider to be a mainframe uh, food forest layout. And once this part is laid out, we can do the shaping of the beds. In this case, we're gonna use a tiller to, to till the edges and, and to develop that. We can go ahead and do the earthworks, which would be digging the pits for the bananas and using that material to make small mounds for the trees to be planted on. And then once we plant the main elements, we can begin mulching and we can also plant in the, uh, the minor elements, the support species, you know, nitrogen fixing trees, ground covers, all that kind of fun stuff. The mainframe design is what goes in first and that's the context and that's what gives us what we need to move forward. The design here, if you'll notice, there's kind of a big open meadow and this is really, the, this is kind of, for me, it's kind of inspired by an area on my property that, that's very much like this. Um, using the existing trees, making the food forest, and then having this big open meadow. And it's just, in this case, it's going to be, there's, there's going to be a corridor that comes in through here. And you can drive out around that side. And there's also like a smaller entranceway on this side. So there's like, a, like an island here, this long bed that kind of wraps around the whole this whole meadow and then the food forest that we already did. So with this big meadow in the middle, it'll be a really nice spot to come in here. If, if people want to park here, if they want to set up camping or picnicking or whatever it is for a larger event, or just to have a nice open space that you feel like you're in your own forest, your food forest, but you have a little bit of room. It's something that I see a lot of people, especially if you don't have a lot of land, they tend to fill the whole place up and, um, I understand, you know, you want, you want one of everything, you want to have it all there, but when you fill the whole place up to begin with, it doesn't give you a lot of options later on to make adjustments and tweaks and add and, you know, still have exciting new phases that come along within the project. But when you leave things open, you know, you, what, I'm, what we're doing with, with what we're doing now, we're going to create this whole buffer zone and this middle spot's going to be really protected. So it could be that later on they decide they don't need this open meadow and you know really they spend more of the time over there by the river or whatever it is. They have now they have now in, in three to five years they're gonna have this really nice protected spot that they could start planting in things that are more sensitive. But, but we're leaving that open space so that they have the option um, in the future to do what they want. Once the house is built and they have their power and their well and everything hooked up, we are gonna run an irrigation zone over here and we will put poly pipe just to feed the main trees um, and that is a consideration with how this is laid out the idea being that i don't have islands everywhere like you know one island one island one island i actually have islands that are fairly large and connected and then maybe there's a main path through it and then another fairly large island it's just easier when you only have to stub the irrigation into the bed once instead of having you know 10 stub ups you have one or two or four or whatever it is um, so that's kind of what we're doing now is now that we've done the mainframe layout my buddy Q's over there pruning up the existing trees that are, that are within our planting um, we're going to use a lot of that that cut material as long as it's not something that's going to reroot we're going to use that in the banana pits but what he's doing now is kind of refreshing the trees bringing the canopies up so that when we plant the bananas underneath them they'll have room to grow and they're going to look prettier while he's doing that we're also bringing in mulch to just kind of buffer these edges and uh, yeah that's it that's it for now so this is still day one uh, I'm gonna get back on the tractor and start moving and uh, we'll check back in a little bit later
Oh, let me stand up high. You kind of see the shape of the new beds. What I've done is tilled around the edges and then actually tilt around the edges of, the, of what we've already done, going around that way. So the grass is definitely the main road. This, all this in here is a meadow, main road out. The tilled area isn't necessarily all bed. What we're actually gonna do is, we're gonna only mulch to the edge of where the trees are, and then we're gonna leave this stripe of tilled area on the outside, and we're gonna overseed with cowpea and sun hemp. The client's already got a whole bunch that they bought ahead of time and they're asking me to use it up. It's kind of a new strategy that we haven't, I haven't done it exactly like this before. I've done it similarly, but this is kind of a new thing because we want this to be low maintenance and because the client hasn't moved in, they're not established, they don't have all the tools they need. We're setting up, you can see here, there's the edge of the, the beds that we made. We're tilling it out. We're going to overseed with this with this sun hemp and the cowpea trying to dominate that space that edge space where the grass would normally try to creep in it's already starting to do that so we're gonna we're piling up the mulch around the edges we're overseeding the exterior of the beds and then at the end of the summer we can come through here um, and mow it down and then rake all that beautiful new material onto the uh, the new plantings and give them new fertility Hopefully we will have dominated the ground space and kept the grass to a minimum. It may be that we come back and overseed for the winter. So maybe after this comes out, you know, September or something, we mow it all down. Go ahead and sow, sow over something in the same exact footprint that's gonna run through the winter time. And that cycle could continue. They could keep doing that or eventually they're probably gonna come, the, whatever ground cover does establish it'll probably be grass but it may be something else we don't know yet um, we'll probably end up dominating the edges but in the meantime the food forest will have grown up the sweet potato will start to creep out um, the other long longer term ground cover species will have a chance to to take hold and start to push their way out so that's the strategy here i did it all the way around the whole new planting mainly so that we can see it it's helpful to me to be able to see the shapes you know make curves where I want to make curves, make connections where I want to make connections. For this type of uh, property, it's way more fun to design it in place than it is to try to draw it because when I'm drawing it, I'm usually basing my drawing off of an aerial photo. And the aerial photo, I, like in this case, I could probably tell where the palms were, but actually the most recent aerial photo for this project was before they cleared all the peppers out of here. So you couldn't see where the existing trees were. So I would have had to come out here and like measure or guess, you know, what the existing trees are and then come up with a design around that. Whereas in this case, the client's allowing me to come out here and use my judgment to lay it out. And I think it's gonna turn out better. The, it, the workflow's better. And it, I think they're gonna really like what they get when we get there. So anyway, that's where we're at right now. We'll be checking back.